Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is the second in series on using a saturation mask. In particular, we're going to look at editing the mask itself. And secondly, about using the channels as a better way. So let's go forwards and I'll very quickly scoot through this. See the one before this, the basics one for this in more detail. Oh, filters, apply image, use current layer equations. So that's max minus min copied to all layers. We're just going to make our saturation mask and apply that. And I'll skip forward now to the end of the apply image. Right, so now what we're going to do is, now we've got the saturation mask and we are going to, rather than go right click and rasterize the mask, we're going to save this mask down in the channels panel here. And if you haven't done this before, it's handy and you'll see how useful it is soon. So I literally go to either the red, green and blue of on the down here, the background red, green and blue and say create a spare channel and effectively copies the mask down here. So if I right click on that and go to rename, I'm going to call this original mask. OK. Now I can drag this layer down to the bottom and work on the top layer. And if, for example, I wanted to put in some curves, then to put the mask onto here, I simply go to the original mask down here, right click it and say to load curves adjustment alpha there and it adjusts it. So now when I turn this up and down, I'm adjusting the curves, but moderated by that mask. So only the more saturated areas are responding. So for example, the sky is getting darker here, but the clouds are not getting darker, which is handy. However, I'm going to move this thing a heck of a long way in order to make this work. And what I'm going to do is go back to this, the background layer here where I've got the mask and look at the histogram on this and look it's really squished right down here and it's because the original image is not particularly saturated there's no saturated colors because if they were they'd be white up here so i to make this mask more useful i'd like to stretch this out here i could use levels but a quicker way is to go up here to auto levels and watch what happens to the histogram there you go it's been stretched right out and now a mask down here has got colors all the way from black to white and I can again go down to here and go into the red green or blue right click on that say create spare channel and now I've got another one here I can right click on that rename that and we'll call that one stretched mask so I can now quickly access the original or the stretched one in fact if I go to the top layer here go to the curves I can just go to the stretched one, right click that, say low to curves and replace the mask that's there. So now if I double click this and I do here, I've got a much better, better range of control in this. In fact, what I can do is if I say I'd like to make the sky more contrasty like that, so I'm pulling out the blues and things and but leaving the sky, the clouds nice and white, but I don't want this effect on the ground here. I can go to this mask here, which I've already got, get a paintbrush, make sure opacity is 100%, a bit soft, colour, black. And now if I paint on this mask, I'm effectively going to restore the original image so the curves only applying now into the sky. And if I want to keep that later on to do more editing on the sky, I just go down to the curves adjustment alpha here in the channels, right click on here and say create spare channel, right click on the spare create spare channel, rename it, and we'll call that one scratched sky. And I've done that. Or if I want to say, well, let's go back and I'm going to go back to the stretched mask again. Or maybe I'm going to go to this one here. Let's do some editing of the original mask itself here. Because I can actually change this in any way I like and then save it again as a mask. So, for example, if I go to the adjustments here, 
and go to curves and put a big letter S curve on that. What I'm doing here is creating a high contrast mass. So I'm exaggerating where the saturated areas are and turning down the areas where it is not. And so I can literally go to that one there, go down to the original here and again do the same sort of thing. Right click on one of the colors, create spare channel, right click on that, rename that to say high contrast. Okay. Now, again, I can go to the curves or anything else, hit the right click the high contrast, load to curves adjustment alpha, and it's now affecting just down here. So now, if I turn this up and down here, I can have, say, let's, I like the way this is working on like the tips of this thing down here, all these down here, look at the way this is just affecting those, brightening up those, but I don't like what's happening in the sky. So again, I just go back to the curves, a layer here because then I'm going to paint on the mask, get myself a paintbrush and just paint out this effect on the sky. And now I'm just got this stronger effect down here. So there you go. There's just a few things you can do in editing, keeping copies of your masks down here and having very different effects by editing the mask layer itself. That's it and thank you very much for watching.